got Philip Tiho with me uh, from ASME, uh, who just finished a fantastic session on a topic that's important to everyone in our business, how to get paid. So that's a good one. We all want to get paid, yes. right? Thanks, Leslie. <laughs> Absolutely. So maybe you can give us, just give us a bit of a summary of your topic and then some advice for people. Yes. Well, getting paid is not when you have to go to court or when you have to file a legal claim. To improve your chances to get paid, traders can do very simple steps. Like if you are dealing with a party you've not known before, do you verify that the party actually exists? Um. Even s simple things like, you know, checking on them through Google, <laughs> looking at an email, if they say are substantial, why are they using a Gmail account? And sometimes parties also, they do not pay attention to their contracts. They sign without looking at contract terms. And when they sign, when they go to court, the judges won't accept, look, I didn't understand, I didn't read. Because in the email which they confirm, or rather they didn't raise any objection, the contract terms are already valid and binding. And sometimes when they cover themselves by insurance, they don't read their insurance policies. So how can they argue in court to say that, look, I didn't agree those, those terms, when the incident happened in June and the policy is given to them in January? Right. So if they raise their problems there and then, parties can always negotiate the terms, maybe paying some extra for premium, but that will avoid a legal dispute. And, and that's what we all want, correct. right? And, and sometimes when you have a dispute, which is unavoidable, do you go to court or do you go to arbitration? That's, How would you make that decision? Well, if, if parties get some legal advice, they build up a relationship with a lawyer, it could be a, a simple phone call to their long-term legal advisor who will just tell them that. But if they go ahead without thinking about the contract, the terms, then they end up with problems later on because they think that they have no problem but when the case goes to court they'll be caught up by terms which they never read never understood mm -hmm. so would you advise um, bringing an attorney in early to review a contract well in substantial cases definitely mm -hmm. but in the run of the mill case if they develop a relationship with an attorney sometimes it could be something very simple and that attorney, because of the long-term relationship, may be able to offer this advice for free of charge. Ah, well, everyone yeah. likes that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, are there certain uh, laws in um, Malaysia, for instance, that are different from other parts in the, of the world that people should be aware of? Well, the good thing about Malaysian law is that we have a lot of laws which are British-based. In other words, Malaysia applies common law. So for in the area of sales of goods, in the area of maritime, the common principles apply in Malaysia, in Singapore, in Hong Kong, and in England because of the English legacy. So these laws are easily understood. So nothing, nothing uh, substantial to worry about. But if you have a large transaction, then you should go to a Malaysian attorney. Oh, really? To be sure of your terms, to be sure of the laws for the particular area. All right. Um, as far as the terms in a contract, uh, what sections of that contract should people pay particular attention to? I, I would say when you are dealing with certain goods, if you are using the trade terms like CIF, FOB, perhaps they could use INCO terms. And when you have carriage of goods uh, by sea, then they should look and pay particular attention to the bill of lading terms and also the charter party terms before they sign. And maybe at that point of time, if they are chartering a vessel, they should get proper legal advice. 
Excellent. Yes. That's all good advice. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thanks, Leslie.